This is episode 61 of our Road to Unicum, and today we review the Progetto. This is the tier 8 Italian premium tank that was recently released. The event for this tank just wrapped up in North America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. And so there's a window you have into the first week of May where you can decide whether or not to purchase the tank. I didn't have time to grind out this tank to earn it for free, but I worked my way up to a 60% discount, so I paid roughly 28 US dollars for it. And as far as premium tanks go, I think that this tank is totally worth it. And just based on the dozen battles that I've played so far, I would argue that this is the most enjoyable tank that I've played because it has such a unique mechanic. The gun can load up to three shells in the clip, so you can fire them one after another for about 720 damage, you know, 240 damage per shell. The, the catch is that the fewer shells you have in your clip, the longer it takes to reload each shell. Uh, but what this allows you to do is have that decision, that flexibility to say, hey, do I want to unload all three shells in my clip and then have to wait about 28 seconds for the clip to reload fully? Or you know, do I want to just trade one shot at a time? We're going to look at this tank with two battles. The first here is an all tier 8 Moravanka. And this M41 makes a very common mistake. After he spotted me, he continued, he drove back into my field of fire. So granted, only one of those last two shells landed, but that M41 is now in one shot territory. It's a very common mistake. You've got to watch your exit line, especially when you've been spotted if you're in a squishy tank. So I'm having to wait here, you know, while the clip is reloading. One thing to keep in mind is if you're trying to reload shells and before a shell is loaded you fire, you basically reset the loading of that shell. right? So sometimes you might want to withhold your shot just until the next shell loads and then begin firing. Now this M41 also made a really common mistake around new players who are unskilled and that is firing high explosive ammo. Um, some tanks feature derp guns so using HE makes sense, but for the vast majority of tanks the only time you want to load high explosive is against squishy tanks like the German tank destroyers or some of the weaker light tanks. But for the most part, you know, AP is going to be the way to go. And you notice that M4A1 that I just put a lot of damage into, he made a very common mistake. You know, I reviewed that tank a while back. The tank is tall, it's squishy, it's slow, has a long reload. So what you don't want to do is put yourself into like this trench where he was at along the 8 lane where he has no clear exit. In that case, I went ahead and started firing on the Panther 8.8 .8 because both I and my platoon mate, Spatty Cakes, you know, were in a position where we can burst him down. So even though I didn't fully reload the clip, it's okay. The two shells that were loaded were going to be enough. Now this is in counter mode, and we do have enough tanks close to the cap that I'm not worried about them capping us out yet. Now I am going to keep an eye on how things are going over there. I have lost battles with teams that have refused to defend the cap, even though it's relatively easy. You go around the corner, you just do module damage. You don't even have to do HP damage. Or just spots so that our already who's firing in a southwestern angle can reset the cap. Right, I've almost reloaded the clip. You notice it took quite a bit of time there. Now the clip is reloaded and I didn't push on their progetto. Why? Because I had missed my first shot and so that if I had pushed on him earlier it might mean to put me in a situation where he gets to land three damning shots to my two and that's just not worth it. But because I've got a full clip here, I can figure, figure, uh, finish off the Progetto and then help weaken that FCM50T so he's one-shottable. We've still got to clear out the remaining tanks here on the zero line because I don't feel like the enemy's in danger of capping. I'm going to go ahead and help out over here. Notice I've got one shell loaded. There's the second one. And if I had a kill shot on the Progetto, I would take it. However, because I don't, I'm going to wait right until that third shell is loaded and then fire. Remember, if I had fired before that third shell was loaded, the reload on that third shell would have started all over again. So you kind of want to keep one eye on that little, you know, that little indicator. Uh, this is a recording of a replay. I unfortunately didn't hit record. Normally about 95% of the battles that you'll see me feature in my videos are actually the real-time NVIDIA share recording of the battle. And I prefer that because you can see me typing in chat. Um, it takes away, it makes totally transparent the fact that I don't use mods and that I'm not cheating in any way because you're looking at the actual real-time footage. But this is a, you know, a recording of a replay and that is how a lot of people make their videos. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I just like having the real real-time recording because it's the real thing. Now in this case, I'm circling down toward this Rhine uh, Metal Borsig. Now, the thing is, because I have conserved my hit points wisely, 
even if he's packing the high caliber 750 alpha gun, I can survive a hit from him. So, you know, obviously I don't want to trade my hit points foolishly, but, you know, even if he had the high caliber gun, which it turns out he does not, I could pretty much trade him for an even amount of damage. And we're just trying to get rid of this guy as fast as possible so that we can push the flank and then go and reset the cap. Now that last shot, you did see me intentionally try to land a tracking shot. It didn't go through in that case, but you know, tracking opponents in the open is great so that your team can finish them off. It will also give you some assisted damage, uh, which is very helpful both in terms of experience and then you know, doing things like trying to earn marks for your tanks. The nice thing about flexing over here is notice I wait, I wait, I wait. Okay, right as the third shell was finished loading, loading, then I fire. That gives me that third shot to work with, which was needed in that case based on how much hit points that T-34B had remaining. At this point in the match, you know, we're pretty much in no danger of losing. For that matter, it's highly unlikely I'm going to die unless I do something silly. If the game were closer contested, I would be more careful about pushing up on this ridge. This is totally exposed, which means this AMX could choose to shoot at me, or the RD or tank destroyer could fire at me. And then right here, unfortunately, I got, <laughs> I got a phone call. So you notice I just put the tank on auto drive. I was trying to pick up the phone. Now, if I were still playing, driving right here, you see the second I come back, the thing to do is to try to start wiggling and making your movement unpredictable. And that will mess up you know, your opponent's ability to predict where you're going to be. And the thing too is if you're, you know, zigzagging back and forth and the player's trying to follow you with their aiming reticle, they're going to get reticle bloom where the aiming reticle gets bigger and it makes the gun less accurate. But as it turns out, he didn't kill me at least. And I could try to spot him. As it turns out, you know, with the projecto from the event, you get 100% crew, uh, but none of my four uh, crew members has camouflage trained. And, you know, I don't even have max vision. So it's very likely that if I were to push up uh, around the corner of this building, even with that bush there, that I would get outspotted. And I don't want to hand the AMX a free kill. I want to be the one doing the killing. So a pretty clean game, but this gives you an idea of how flexible this autoloader mechanic is. And, you know, you've heard me talk about it in other videos. I think that a three shell autoloader is the ideal size because it allows you to do that ratio of, you know, trading three shots to one right and generally speaking you know a three shell a three clip three shell uh, in the clip autoloader can reload in a manageable time frame uh, but even more so with this tank because you reload one shell at a time okay so you know that was an all tier eight battle and you know you, you guys know i've been covering a lot of battles where i'm the bottom tier so let's look at a you know solo queue Lakeville battle and one thing to pay attention is how people drive and where they drive at the beginning. It's actually really annoying to me that the Scorpion was doing this. Me getting to where I'm going is probably going to be more important than where the Scorpion is because he's probably going to stop over by H4 and just sit there. But I pay a lot of attention to how my friendly players are driving and deploying at the start of the match. Like this E75 should be in the ditch with me. The fact that he is on the left side of the road shows that he doesn't understand that he's, he's like you can hear those shells. Someone's firing in our direction. That E75 was spottable. Right. Meanwhile, like if you look at some of the other tanks, like our German Tier 10 and our AMX M449, they're properly deep in the ditch on the K-Lane. And that's how you should be driving. You should be driving in such a way to minimize your exposure, especially if you're a large target, and especially in a Tier 10 battle where you know there are light tanks and medium tanks with very far view range, and it's pretty common to see one player come up. Our T100LT is in a very good spotting position. You'll, you've seen me cover that in other videos where he's at a place where he's got a good field of fire, a, a building right next to him and then bushes to work with. Now he has to be careful, he did fire his gun and if there were enemy tanks along the four lane between like around C4, D4, the T100LT may have been spotted. Our WZ originally went into Valley to spot, which I think is a total waste because even if you go and you spot enemy tanks, typically the only person who can shoot at them is our Artie. It's far more valuable to be either spotting uh, where the T100 was, that northeast corner of the G7 building, the T100 actually don't like where he is right now um, in terms of his spotting position. Um, or, you know, spot from the middle road, which is much higher risk. But if you light tanks, you know, from the four to the zero lanes, it's not only Artie that can fire on those targets, but it's your tanks as well, and you can assert positional control. Now, watching the minimap here, uh, we clearly have no presence on the two lane. Our Defender and our T95 are both playing this incorrectly. We have control of city, so the Defender and T95 are in no danger of taking any flanking fire from the city, right? But you can't just give up ground without making them pay for it. And both the T95 and Defender have excellent armor profiles to work with. They could be hugging the south side of the hill, 
and spotting for our teammates. But instead what they're doing, the defender runs away, which is useless. The T95 probably should be pushed up a little bit further. He backed away a little bit. But what I'm going to do here is play this pivot point since there are some knocked down bushes. And I'm going to try to fire. Now this was inadvisable on my part. I was hoping the heavy tank would flatten out so that I would get shots on him. Um, and then when I fired, he spotted me. And I'm well inside you know, the view range circle right now. So I really shouldn't have taken that shot. And the Sheridan is their, their only tank that has a field to fire me who is not in the valley right now. And as you guys can see, he's having to hide because if he sticks his neck out, he's going to get shot at from multiple directions. So I'm not really worried about taking much flanking fire from the Sheridan, but this is great right here. This is the power of the Progetto, being able to dump three shots like that. So I, I put some hurt on that heavy tank, and then I helped spot to get an enemy Progetto killed. Our friendly Progetto, by the way, tried to make the run down the K-line down to like K1, K2, and he did it too late. He would have had to cross over before their tanks reached the H lane. It is a very powerful pivot point, and I've carried battles for my team in squishy tanks, low tier lights or medi uh, medium tanks by going down to K1 and getting flanking fire. But in this case, our Progetto, good idea. He just did it 15 seconds too late, right? And so, you know, getting to a flanking corner position, you don't want to expose your self to fire on the way in. Now I'm having to be patient here, you know, obviously that Kronwagen is a very dangerous tier 10, but this is a perfect situation. I can get tracking shots, so that second shot tracked him, and the bushes are fully solid between us, so even when I fire, I'm still benefiting from the camouflage provided by those bushes. Now I am definitely looking forward to when I get this crew trained up and I can get full camo, because right now, like I said, I have no camo, so I think the camo rating is something like 14 you know before I shoot which isn't very good you get into the mid 20s then you can talk about playing you know vision control games pretty pretty uh, craftily but in this case though I will get the first spot advantage because of these bushes you know it's a really good position to work from you know and this is why for example you know a lot of players will try to run away from a bad situation our defender did exactly that he went to a position where he's not really adding much value now he could have stayed where we are now and spotted and been bouncing a lot of damage but this is very common a lot of times uh, let's say your average player even a decent player and especially your bad players will make the incorrect decision they'll just run away and you can't just keep running away and giving ground somebody has to stay there and spot in this case I'm doing a lot of it even though I'm not getting a lot of spotting damage because they're not really hitting when I'm spotting. But um, the, the point is, you know, being here is good and I've been waiting until this tank exposes his hull because the turret is titanium. But the nice thing is I've basically stalled out their push, right? And supported by our Udez in the back and the Scorpion and the Artie, you know, for a while it was looking like you know, we might be having some troubles with our base, but all it takes is one or two tanks to go and spot to enable the rest of your friendly guns to stay active. You know, and now our guys are zerging their tanks on the two lane. I'm gonna see if I can get another shot or two here. Okay, there isn't really anything I can do because the Yag Tiger's superstructure, the upper you know, hull is the only thing that is showing, and that's a total waste of my time. So I could push Valley in this case, but what we don't really have is someone on the four lane who has good spotting mechanics. Now granted, you know, I don't have max view range. If you have optics and situational awareness max, which I do not yet, uh, you still won't get to the 445 meter view range. So, you know, what I'm planning on doing as soon as I can get all four, um, the crew members up to 100% on their first scale, I'm going to rescale them over to Brothers in Arms. Now, I did um, select a female crew commander, I had one available, so I went ahead and put her in this tank so that I would have six of them right off the bat. So, like I said, when the other three crew members, and I've been popping boosters, get to 100% with their first skill, I'll pay gold to reskill them, I'll get Brothers in Arms, and then between that and situational awareness, I should have the max, I uh, reach the, you know, key threshold of 445 meters of view range. Now, having to go around these guys here, they're being a little too passive. The, both the Udez and the Defender should be pushing up this road. There's only a 140 remaining. The 140 has a bunch of tanks that are rushing him. They should be doing what I'm doing. They're being too passive. And you know, our T95 could have been racking up massive damage if he had stayed a little bit more aggressively on the uh, the I line or the L line L line I line. We've got a little bit of a sliver shot there. That one missed, and then I aim a little bit too far to the right. There seems to be like some small rocks here, but at least that last shell lands. But you know, like the thing about this game about winning battles and then you know 
trying to increase your win rate and things like your WNA, which is a measure of your individual contribution, you got to figure out ways to keep yourself active. And you have to stay with the pace of the battle, uh, especially if you're in a slow tank, right? And so there have been some times when I was one of the closest friendly tanks on our team to the enemy, you know, back when I was you know, hang, hanging down over by K5. Um, but I was able to do so safely because there was that building and that soft cover which allowed me to have to play vision games. So, all right, the Progetto, fantastic tank. And, you know, I would say I've only paid for two premium tanks with my own money. One was the FCM 50T, which I bought a few years ago, which I absolutely hated. And then the second one is this one. You know, I have played other premium tanks that were purchased or through gifts from other people gifted to me. Um, so this is the only second premium I've ever bought, but this is a phenomenal tank. I think if you're not first with autoloader play, this is kind of a kind of a kiddie pool way of getting into it and learning, you know, how to use that clip. Uh, but it's also much more forgiving because you'll reload one shell within about 10 seconds, so at least you won't be defenseless. And you can see like the stats that I put up for a tier 8 premium running silver ammo only in, you know, public battles, you know, averaging over 2200 damage a game. And that's pretty healthy for a tier 8, you know, tank. So, uh, I'm definitely going to be playing this one a lot and really enjoying it and um, let me know what you think about the tank and if you have any feedback on the video. Take care.